Hello YouTube, today I'm going to show you how I made this leather wizard hat. Now here are some of the tools you'll need. You'll need some sort of hole punch. I got various versions. Uh, sewing needles and the waxed yarn. You also need a lighter uh, to burn off the edges once you're done. A pin, Zaka blade, extra blades. Uh, if you didn't want to go this route, a sewing awl is a great option. Uh, both will probably be needed um, for my part. Some sort of leather stain, obviously. Um, two types of leather. One's a stiff leather, one's a soft. The stiff leather is just going to help it hold its shape. Soft leather will be the outer uh, skin that you will use in your project. One way to get a nice circle, you take a pen and a string and a tack and you can just make a circle like that. That will give you a nice circle. Start off with, I'll cut this out. Once you're done, a good way to find the center piece is fold it 100% in half, line up all the corners and make a mark. Then fold it in half again, but from the other angle. So that the center. Now you got the dead center. Now one thing you're going to need is an oval. That's the width of your head for the actual hat part. One thing you can do, it's gonna represent your head. Just wrap it up in foil, tape, and then now hold a aluminum foil, kind of like cap, where you trace on paper. It's even, kind of. Masking tape all around it. Now it helps hold its shape. Make one sure that's the exact brow line that you have because you don't want it to be any bumpiness or anything like that. Obviously, this mannequin head's not my head, but I need to show you the technique. Let's speed things up a bit. Now that you've got a cap, just take some scissors, trim off the excess. Okay, now you have a cap, this paper, and you can just, just gently trace it. Okay. Well, first off, cut it out. Okay, and if you want to find the center point, just line up the edges, fold it in half. And then, just right there on the edge. So you got a little mark there. Fold in a half again for the dead center. Or you can waste your time trying to measure and line up. It's up to you. Now you got dead center, you can match that to the dead center of your leather. And you can trace that hole out for your head. I always add like a little bit of a quarter of an inch, maybe even a half inch on the inside if I was going to wear a wig in the hat. You might want to consider that. And now that we have that on our leather, we'll just cut it out with an exacto blade. Make sure your razor is really sharp, okay? And before you do, kind of, you notice I uh, put a little arrow here with the F, that's for the front. I did the same little thing with the back, with B. So I know that's going to be the back side of the hat. You want to keep one consistent cut so you don't have all those jagged edges. Almost there. And once you have this, you'll have a template for your soft leather. And I don't waste anything, so I'll keep this piece. But you know, you've got a giant leather done at home. And the whole point of the, the stiffer leather, the tuning leather, is to have kind of like some sort of stabilization. So soft leather would be the outer piece which would be the nice thing that everybody sees can stay up so I need like to finish this I'm going to make kind of like a 
little brown, uh, like a, like a sun hat, you know, you know, where your head's exposed on the inside. So, I got to measure out my head. And if it was, uh, let's say your little masking tape ball was your correct size, just go around, add a couple inches to it, right, like so. Let's say probably about four inches should do it. Maybe four inches on one side, like six on the other, kind of help keep the hat stay up a little bit. Now with the added inches that go against the donut hole, it's gonna be a few inches longer. So you wanna take your true headband width, which mine is like 22 to 23 inches just off the top of my memory. Um, and you wanna find the longer first center point. You just take the ruler, fold it in half, and that gives you your center point real fast. Okay. So that's your center point of that strip. Find out how long you want it, like I said, about six inches at the highest, maybe seven, I'll just do seven for right now. Seven inches, all right. Now, at that seven inch point, you're gonna do your true half width. That way it kind of funnels, right So that is 22, 23 inches. Just give myself a little bit of Extra there. Okay. Now this is a little rough. I'll fine tune it for the actual project. Now I can just follow that straight up to wherever. I was thinking four inches originally, so I'll do that in four inches. That's right, four inches. Okay. So, this will come in ever so slightly, cutting off, and that will be on the inside, help make that cone shape that you need. And that will go all the way to this, right here, smoother. I don't know if I have like a little bit of a front there, almost like a tear of that leather. All you have to do is cut that out, Fold it over, and you got your precise measurement. Okay, like I said, I'll just take it, fold it over, trace it. Remember, always do this on the left side or a piece of paper first, so you get your templates just right. And I just need to cut that up. Okay, kind of was like an open 10 gallon cowboy head at the moment. But you guys get the idea. The way I'm going to have it is going to actually be the reverse. Where this nice smooth side will actually face my shoulders. And the rough side will be sewn inside out on the inside. Those are good templates. I'm going to move on to the soft leather. Okay, when you're doing and tracing your template onto your soft leather, you gotta be mindful that leather is a perfect skin. So it's going to have some imperfections. Just be wary of where you put your template because I want to add a couple of inches because I'm going to fold over, and make a nice little trim line there. I'm going to Find that good spot, trace it out. Okay, since I'm kind of expanding the width just by measuring out an inch all right, from all the corners, so it doesn't slide around on me and not get uneven measurements, I immediately made the circle. Now remember that I put this front, this back piece, 
and I put just a little mark there. That way I can always line it up. So if it moves around, I can always line it back up and uh, not uh, have any uneven, wumpy uh, side pieces here. Well, right now that I got these pieces, I can just connect the dots just like so. Remember, carry those little front and back lines into your project again. Okay, I'm just going to do this and cut it out. Now with soft leather, it's a little hard to use an exacto blade. I got a good pair of scissors. I can just do that. So I'm going to cut it out and get the idea. Okay, cut that all out too. Just set it aside. Now, to make a big old comb. Now remember that insert. Now I know how wide to make it. Now, I just got to uh, choose a length for the triangle. Okay. Got the piece. I traced out right to the corners and then made a mark for the center point. Now, all I have to do is figure out how long I want to make it. Probably somewhere around there. Come to this corner, all the way to that point. But it's going to be kind of like a fat point, like about two inches, kind of rounded. That way, when I stitch it, it won't be so like little jabby point. It'll have kind of like a little more natural look to it. Yeah. Uh, so the measurement is 19 inches center point. I did do a slight curve to it. Maybe come all the way to the edge. Once I cut that out, trace it over. Now I got my two halves for my point. Okay, almost cut. This is where I got that center line. Mash that up. Ah, continue. I forgot to say add a little quarter of an inch for the stitch line because you will stitch this smooth side inside out and then you'll flip it around. You know, it's gonna be a nice hidden stitch. Okay, well now I got the triangle piece out. I know it doesn't seem like much in complexity, but you gotta make sure everything looks neat, clean. So I'm gonna actually make the the stiff leather piece separate all together and then glue it together. And I'll stitch this piece to this piece right now. And the way I'm going to do that, I can painstakingly hold everything. You know, little holes all in the way around. I do mean all the way around. Okay, I'm ready to sew. And no matter whether you use the sewing needle or just old fashioned stitching needles on a piece of string, you're going to have to punch your holes. So whatever hole punching device you have, um, get cracking. So you'll leave the bottom open because that's going to be stitched to the donut hole. So to be honest, you're just going to be getting this to that end for right now. Uh, but go ahead and punch all your holes. It'll be all right. And this is very tedious, just line things up. Flip them. So you get the idea. I'll speed this up. Get on the, it should take quite some time. Most annoying part of this, hearing the squeak and the clink. Just to make it easier on you guys, tools you have access to. Well, I thread it with normal needles. 
just like so. That's on one side. Now this string is twice this length all the way. So it was over 30 inches, which is off the top of my head. Uh, it was, actually, uh, it was 38 inches in length. So, because uh, this was 19 inches in length. So you just make a loop, kind of squish it a little bit, push it through about. Okay. That's good. So, I always have a habit of sewing right to left on the Y. It just feels better to me. Right, so, I'm going to find a middle point. If you need to. So, I'm using my, my vise right now to kind of put my phone in. But, you go to the next line, go on the other side. Now, if I used a thicker hole, this will slide in there quite nicely. So, I'll do that. Alright, so now we've got two on each side. Take that needle, it's going to go through the hole, the other needle just can't cut it. And then the crisp pressing, it does a double stitch from the very start. Now if I clamped it, this would be kind of stable for me to just weave in and out like that, non stop. This is going to go down the line, and we get to the edge. We'll backtrack it a little bit, snip off the excess, and burn it. So, I don't think my string is going to last the rest of the stitch. So, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to backtrack it right there. So, I don't know if you noticed that, but I did that in between the stitching. So, I'm going to go in right here. Just backtracking over here too. So go back to here, just back one. Now this is the opposite string obviously. We'll start off on this side. string. Now I'm going to start in this corner. Okay, just like before, I backtracked. Pulled my stitching from the dead center. I will do a classic little square knot. There I got the first part of it already. And make it a triple. Snip up the middle. And then. So now I got a gnome hat. <laughs> so far. Alright. Try it on. Right now I look like a garden gnome. Okay, a little trial and error. Um, I noticed that this leans 
too far forward when I put it on. So I'm gonna just cut off the access in the back and change the angle of how it sits on my head. I just, to keep my stitching, so I only had to undo all my stitching, I just snipped to here and just kind of unraveled what I had made. So that way I can cut into this, not backtrack and re-stitch all of that. So, a little time saver there. Okay, cut that piece off. So, what that does is give me almost three inches the edge there down to pretty much a half inch towards the front of the hat so you can count that into your measurement the inside part can stay the same uh, just this angle was just too too forward like this so now it kind of looks a little bit better but I have a little wiggle room I can always take away. You just can't add and make it look nice. Okay, pressing on, I am going to puncture out my holes here. And what I call the donut. Puncture out the holes on that. And stitch them together. Okay, holes are punched. And whatever number entirety of holes you have here, sure your spacing and the same amount of holes are in here so that whole area so I'm going to find my little markings here make sure it's rough side sewn to rough side so get the idea <clears throat> so Make sure they all line up. Okay, just make sure rough side to rough side. I got the whole circle all the way around. And now that's all stitched up. I've kind of been stretching that out all day on uh, that little insert there. So I'm going to set that aside now and work on the insert, the harder leather. I'm going to ignore the, the crown area. I'm going to work on this. The first thing I need to do, this tool is called Grover. What I'll do is uh, it'll shave out a little line here for me to do stitching. So I'm going to get that set up. Now this is the rough side, but I'm just kind of lining it up to kind of see how far I need to pinch it. So I'm going to do the lining here. I'm looking at probably about, let's see, half inch. Okay, so I'm going to go a half inch into this, uh, Mark on the other side, and I'll shave that out. So that'll go just like so. So this adjusts just by going like that. You can measure out your levels like that. I'm going to go to a half inch. And we go from this little hole. There's like a little tiny hole that shaves it out. And that's where you want to go. So I want to do it. To right, so, and tighten it up. Okay, that's good. Smooth side here. All right, let's take it down just a little bit. See that I got a little indention. It'll actually start shaving out. Like little 
shavings of it. And that's where I'll put my puncher holes so I'll know without guessing Try to keep it nice and steady. So, back to the hole punching. I can just follow the line. And that's very tedious. So, you guys get the idea. I'm just going to follow this other way around. Punch out all these holes. And then, along the bottom only, I will punch out holes all the way down here. Alright, now that I got all that punched out, I went a little bit tighter to the edge for the inner hole here. Um, probably about one fourth of an inch or less. Now, remember when I did the, the I guess the cone of the hat, I took in a little bit afterwards. So I'm gonna go right about an inch. I'm gonna take that to the center point. Get a nice straight ruler. Measure that off. That way the curvature will be precisely the same or pretty close to it. And just for a quick reference, I'll cut this out. And just fold it in half, and that's how I'll get my evenness without having to do it twice. Or you can just measure it twice. Okay, now that I got everything punched out, remember I have prop marks. Now, with this nice smooth side to actually press against my forehead so it's not rough, now I'll line that up with the prop marks and I'm going to slide and fold. Layer this on top, okay? And stitch all the way around and now give me a nice curve. I'm going to start from the spot where I want my front. I lined up my holes precisely the way I want them and that's where I'll start. As you can see, I got one half pretty much ready. I only did like a single stitch at a time so I'm going backtrack. And meets up with this edge and then tie it off. It's a little hard to do the both sides at the same time stitch that I'm normally doing, but you can see how nice the layering is. And this rough side will be glued to the inside of this rough side. This is what it looks like with the insert. It's not glued down or stitched yet, but you can see how it props it up so it's not so floppy. I do like that top end like that, but not the whole hat. And this gives me a little bit of room here. I might have to take a pie shape cut out of it and stitch that up in the back, but I'll make sure if I do, it'll be with that seam line right there. And it does need to be folded over and stitched, which might take care of that problem in itself. But as you can see here, that's what it looks like for the insert. Now, you don't have to do it like me. You can have it a tooling leather from the very start. Um, this is pretty soft, but, or you could choose a, a thicker uh, version of soft leather that might actually hold its shape. But this is what I did. You don't have to do it exactly like I am but I'm just showing you what I'm doing. Moving on, I'm gonna attach this skin to this hat. I'll first have to puncture holes around the whole edge here. And there'll be one on the very edge and one a half inch away from the edge. The reason for that is why I pinch it over. I'm gonna stitch it up over that edge. All right, I decided even though this, I wanted a little bit more room just to have a little bit of a snug fit, 
we'll add an elastic insert to the inside. Since it stretches, it'll go to the widest part of this, but still, since it's measured to my actual head width, all right, it'll snap to my head width, but give me the comfort I need and space I need. So I'll sew this up. I just made it one inch longer than what I need to, so I have something to sew with. And I'll just stitch that to the inside, but I'll do that with normal stitching, normal everyday needle and thread. Okay, I got my elastic ready. I'm just gonna follow the inside of the brim where the holes are. I just stitch that and I'm gonna stitch it so it kind of is loose on top. So using the holes, I'm gonna get this started. And then with working with elastic, you do get a lot of snags in your uh, string. But I'll just follow that all the way around. We good. Okay, got the elastic all on the inside. Keeps it nice and snug. Now it's time to stitch this up. What I'm going to do is remember my little crop mark there. I'm going to get that seam line right here to match up to that. And I'll be back and I'll stitch around natural like comb to the inside of here. I'm going to use a uh, traditional leather sewing needles for that. So back with these needles and I'll stitch that together. Because of all the layers I'm getting through, I do a single stitch through each layer. As you can see, I've already poked through here. And now I'm going through this layer, through the back. And I'm not doing my usual double-ended um, stitching all, both sides at once. I'm just gonna do a single kind of stitch. That way uh, it won't be so tedious and hard to work with. Because this is kind of tough. You know, you got thick needles and you got a lot of material that you're, I'm trying to sew together. So, without sewing machine, yeah, it it's, puts a little wear and tear on your fingertips. All right, now that that's stitched together, it's time to do some gluing. I'm gonna start right on the inside here, just around the base, all right? And I'm gonna follow that around. Um, I like contact cement, but I'm currently out, so I'm gonna use the official leather weld see if I even like it if this doesn't work for you which you know I haven't seen great results with it myself use contact cement like well wood or uh, barge uh, you get a really good bond with those two uh, I'm gonna give this a shot and as I'm gluing and weighing things down I start with the front and work my way to the back and my suspicions are right, I got too much leather. So I'm gonna cut out a little pie shape here, stitch that up and then continue uh, gluing things down. So I'll make that nice and uh, you see me stitch, you don't, you don't need any more information on that. So yeah, I'll just cut that out. Okay, after stitching that up, I wait, put more glue down, and I pressed it down as much as I can just by patting it all the way to the edge. Hopefully that'll stick nice, and we'll see. Right now I'm just weighing down with bottles and such until uh, I feel it's nice and dry. And that's pretty well attached for me to start stitching at the edges unglued just so I can do that. So I can just fold over and punch a hole and stitch that together. While I was waiting for that, I cut out 
a belt because I have this awesome belt buckle. I have a bunch of different belt buckles, but I never knew what to do with this until just now. <clears throat> Perfect for the wizard. But the uh, belt, I just got a piece of leather and use this ruler as a template. Just cut along the sides and then just punch it holes enough for the the clip to uh, poke through. So um, I'm going to get away from that for a moment. I'll come back to that. But now is to punch your holes into all this and fold it over and stitch it. Okay, <clears throat> as I'm about ready to make this brim, I got to make sure because I do have some uneven like overhang in some spots. And some spots are a little white. So I'm just kind of like folding over, looking where the holes are, getting it tight, just pressing down. That way it gives me a little indication where how much overhang I would have and I can cut that off later. Because I don't want to stitch it unevenly. So kind of like a old fashioned uh, cartoon maybe and I keep flipping the page back and forth to make a slight adjustments, you know? And kind of tedious, yes. Um, but it gives me, you know, it helps me with the accuracy. I'm gonna do that all the way around and uh, start cutting holes. All right, now that I got the whole set I'm gonna adjust this to be Probably a medium hole. Something that's easy to put multiple threads through. And just go on the edges. Just like so. Alright. Do that all the way around. Now it's time to cut away the excess. Not too close to the edge because I don't want uh, to rip anything while I'm stitching it together. Alright. You guys get the idea. Now that I cut off the excess, it's a little bit easier. I guess I could have done this when I was poking the other holes. They're still there, they're just my particular hole punched in press them out. But where you're going to have your brim line is, you're probably going to have to go back over your holes, your original holes from the inside on your stick leather. So when it comes together, it'll stitch on both sides. Have a nice little seam there. Okay, you can probably barely see it because the holes didn't 100% pop out each time. Some of them stayed in there, but there, there's holes. But you should have like an even double set on all of them. Make your brain. Just want to stitch it. All right, you kind of see how it starts to both ends. Okay, let's see. Right there. Comes out the other side. Oops. That's important. I might have to do this one at a time. Doing my normal weave, but you guys can now see the idea of what I'm doing here. Right. Just falling down, all the way around, punching as I go. Start to look a little nice. And as for the uh, tie off, I'm running out of string, so I am going to push that to the <laughs> Oops. Like so. I know that's not traditional now, probably yep. Normally you would weave it in between a couple of these. But I'm not gonna get that fancy. And where is my lighter? There it is. So I can adjust the lighter. And boom. 
looks nice. Okay. Okay. I'll just continue that. A lot more work to do. And some time later, you can see how nice it is. It really helps that out. Alright. Now, be working with the belt. I might make some loops. I think I'm going to have to make some loops. So I'll get that started. So I'll just take some uh, extra stuff. I have plenty of it right on. And I'll fold it over, stitch it up nice. We'll get to that here in a second. This isn't necessary for the belt strap, but I had this basket weave stamp that I've been wanting to do for a while. And the way I do that, I'm going to wet this whole belt and just take my mallet and this, and pound it down. So first thing, I'm going to get this damp. I already marked the dead center of it. So the reason why we do this is so it'll take its shape. While I uh, on my belt to dry up, so it's dye it nice, I took some uh, strips of uh, spare leather, and what I'm going to do is make some belt loops. The plan is to have kind of like a Y shape more in the back, two kind of like like being out on the sides here. And what I'm doing is. Um, doing double holes, right? And I'll just stitch up the corners there. And these will be nice and thin here a little bit. And as you can see here, once I stitched all that together, it looks like this. Those have the one dilemma, well, not dilemma, but the one difficult aspect of this. It's like, when I sew these, be sewing them in like that, Folded them over. So I'll use the existing holes here, but I'm gonna have to use a, a hole punch, like a something like this, to uh, get that little spot. You can probably find one on a good old fashioned Swiss Army knife, but I got a few tools, you know, because this isn't going to be able to get into there. So again, that will go like that, that will go like that. I'll be the belt loop. Okay, I got my loops done. All stitched up. And I already made markings. The two on the front. I found the center point just by pulling the hat in half again because I, all those old marks were like uh, hidden underneath the insert leather. And I already got the back part, so I put your doubt. So I'll just stitch these up by stitching that in and going up to somewhere around there and sewing that in. But I gotta punch your holes here and figure out where I'm gonna put the holes there and get to it. So how am I doing this? Instead of my traditional needle on both ends, I'm gonna pull this through I might have to open it up a little bit more as needed. Just wiggle this through, and as this needle gets out, it'll go through this hole here, like so. Once I pull it out, it'll go around, stitch it, tie it off, do the same thing, pinning it down like that. This is a better way to start. From the rough side, poke through. Needle with the thread out and puncture it in. Pull it in, pull it out. Sewing it from the inside will be a little bit tricky, but not too hard. I made sure each one was looped through twice before tying it off, but now it's got a pretty good solid belt loop. Alright, I'm gonna get the other two on. Okay, principal sewing is finished, other than 
sewing the belt buckle to the belt here. All right, it's time to stain it. Okay, it's time to give it some color. Didn't think I was going with the Curious George man with the yellow hat, did you? Well, I got different shades of green. I got turquoise and I tested that. It's not bad. I actually have traditional green here. Some sort of forest green. I'm gonna test it on a scrap piece of leather, see which one I like. And a that's a little bit different or darker, I'll use on my belt. So I'll give a two-tone color. Alright, I'm gonna get cracking. Make sure you wear gloves. It's made to stain leather. It'll stain your hand most definitely. Actually chose traditional green and it turns out pretty nice. I gotta smooth out some of my uneven like uh, bits, but you know, I'm liking it. Don't forget to get underneath. I'm leaving the stuff inside the hat blank because you know, during sweat, even if I put a protection coating on it, it could still kind of like rub off. So, you know. I'm going to just worry about the outside surface alone. Now I'm going to move on to the belt. After some coats, we got a really, really nice dark green. It looks black on camera, but it's dark green. And a uh, nice, good forest green looking hat. It probably wouldn't have looked like that if it wasn't already like a yellow. But I could have left it kind of rough looking, which would have given it a lighter color, but I want it to be as even as I possibly can get it. So, let this dry, put belt buckle on, and I would say this hat is done. I gave the belt buckle and the belt itself uh, some uh, copper paint. I think it just, it'll give it a little something special with a little bit of metallic and the gray that was originally on the belt buckle was a little flat. So, I think this will ask it the uh, green a little bit better like so we'll see how it goes it's almost done yeah I just uh, did a simple stitch thread my and tied it up on the inside I don't know what I do let's see how it looks all together It is done. Now, around the top, I just, for photo's sake, I put a little of the polyester stuffing on it just to give it a little thick. I might actually keep it in. Um, so, that copper just pops perfectly against the green, and I think it looks gorgeous. So, yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. You might want to subscribe. I don't do too many videos, but when I do, I try to do something different. But take care. God bless.